All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we we'll still have our security consultant uh, who um, has joined us, uh, Dr. Roy Ohideve. Thanks for staying with us, Dr. Roy. This time around, let's just focus on the emerging security challenges in the Southeast. All right, Dr. Roy, you are aware, or Dr. Ohideve, rather, you are aware of what has been happening in the Southeast. But let's start with what happened recently in Imo State with those uh, two uh, army officers killed. The army has come out to say that um, it was actually a, a very sad one, but how could that have been averted, really? Well, um, I, I, I am still not um, comfortable with that incident because um, I know the warrant officer and um, he had a promising, promising career, and um, he had to resign because of that marriage, you know. And um, <laughs> for this thing to have happened like this, it's, it's another eye opener. Because you know, when this Biafra stuff started, I went on Facebook. I became members of. Uh, I joined so many groups so that I can talk to youths. You know, I was trying to impose on them a mindset to have an articulate approach to the matter. Because anytime you go through violence, you cannot control what the armies you are growing will begin to do. Even Boko Haram, who now started to have splinter groups, ISIS, ISWA, they have um, discordant tunes, they fight internally and they break out. You know, so anytime you are going into violence, so I was speaking to them. My my wife is from the east, you know. My my dad is from Edo State. My mom is Fulani. My grandmother is Ijebu. So I always let people know that there are people that came from everywhere in Nigeria. So we are detribalized. We we cannot be in one tenacity or the other. So when you see what our youths are doing in terms of ritual, in terms of um, cyber crime, in terms of any kind of syndrome that is get rich quick, you will understand that the youths are agitated already. The youths are falling out of um, the pattern of being disciplined and um, follow through with parents' guidance, daddy and mommy advice, you know? So the youths are their own government and you begin to perpetrate violence and you think that they will not correlate their frustration and disgruntlement with that violence and take it beyond the level that you can handle. So right now, the East is facing this, this charade of um, unknown government. And we, we understand that the unknown government, they are there when we were having um, headsmen crisis in Enugu and other places. And we expected that these are discussions that could be had. People can discuss. People can have articulate representation. There are people from the East that have been in the presidency. In the last 10, 20 years, there are people from the same East that have held office in CBN, that have held office in uh, our judiciary, that have held office in NDDC, that have held very strategic offices vice president, people from the East. So what did we do with those appropriate positioning to begin to put forward strong and logical arguments? No, because people get into government and they become distracted with what they can take for themselves. They forget the agitations of the people. Now, the, 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 the East that we speak about now used to be very peaceful. I used to go to Enugu. I love Enugu particularly because you go around, you just see people relaxing, and there's a lot of civil servants there. The Nigerian and film industry used to go to the east to film, to make all of those films. And you can see sometimes they go to the forest, they go to distant, um, unpoliced areas to make movies that we enjoy. Who can try that now? You know, but we built this situation ourselves. We believe in violence. We believe in encouraging violence. We believe in agitating minds of people. And that's where we are. So, um, but would you say that um, this unknown gunman and uh, 
the eye pop are one and the same thing? Listen, as we speak right now, there are people that claim they are bandits or they are terrorists. There are people that claim that they were Boko Haram or they were ISIS. Later, we are hearing there is Iswa. Go and check the history. In the East that we are now, there are people that said they are IPO and they made Unandi Kanu their spokesperson and he went into aggression and violence and they are not with him. They are IPOP. They are fighting for Biafra. They are not with Unandi Kanu. The same Unandi Kanu now, when we had about Eastern Security Network, we saw them on videos in forest areas being trained with their black attire with guns. How do you think Nigerian youth will not be attracted? Now, when the ESN is there, we started to hear that they are prepared to perpetrate violence. And they started to say, Monday is no work day. We don't want election. Beginning to give rules and regulations. Now, because those people that are known that belongs to ESN and IPOB cannot be now seen or be perpetrating evil. You will be arrested, you know? So the next thing we had is unknown government. So if the unknown government are not IPOB, if the unknown government are not ESN, I want to ask a question. If you say you are IPOB, you are ESN, and you are for the East, you are for the actualization of Biafra. What stopping you in that same East that you are right now to apprehend your own government? What stop you to stop the violence, the killing of Easterners, Igbo brothers and sisters? Why can you not stop it? If you cannot stop it, how can you protect Biafra when you finally actualize Biafra? That is what I also ask people from a those state. You say headsmen come and kill people. And I said, what about the court guys? What are they doing? I ask people in Benue State, when it is time for the thief and the juku to fight, you will see them killing community to community, killing themselves. One day you will hear that headsmen came and kill everybody. Where are those young men that were fighting within communities? Why can't they protect their community? So if you are not IPOB and ESN and not unknown government, I am not saying they are. Can you arrest the unknown government and put them in those viral videos? Can you arrest the unknown government and hand them over to the police so that when Nandi Kanu is talking to the government, when IPOB is talking to the government for the actualization of Biafra, the government and the people will believe that unknown government is a criminal body. What can but how, how come it has become, I mean, if you look at our country, we have the police force, and we know the primary responsibility of the Nigerian police to maintain uh, law and order, protection of lives and property. Within a civil dispensation, it is their responsibility. And in every state, you have the presence of the Nigerian police. So what's really going on? Is it that the Nigerian police have been overwhelmed? Why? Well, um, the, the capability and the capacity of the Nigerian police was 30 years ago, before politicians permeated the professional structure of the police. As I speak to you now, it is only favored police officers, listen to me, and favored police that actually enjoy the um, technology advancement, the opportunities to interagency organize a result. If you need to solve a problem, you may need to work with financial institutions. You may need to work with telecommunication institutions. You may need to work with private security agencies. You may need to work with other agencies. You will need technology. You will need technological know-how. You will need collaboration of the people. All of those things in the last 30 years have eroded. That is why you will see 
a government forming an IROT to be based in Abuja, to leave Abuja to Bayesa State to go and arrest somebody. Are there no area command? Are there no officers in Bayesa to transfer that information to? Why is the IROT the only one to go to extreme places in the country to arrest people? Why are some cases called right. high profile when it is Nigerians that are involved, that are victims, and that are also paying taxes? All so right, you can see the system we have have been streamlined for the elite. Only the elite get the protection from the police. If you are a poor man and you are among the unfortunate masses, there is no policing for you. So that is where we found ourselves. All but right. some people are opportune to get access to policing and they are using it to protect themselves and perpetrating evil. All that right, is Dr. Where we Dr. Are. Hidebe, very quickly as we wrap up on this particular session, now let's talk about um, the um, seat at home that these are actually in, uh, in force in Anambra State. The new governor, um, Charles Soludo, has said that there's no more seat at home, but over time, people are even scared to go about their normal business. Very quickly, how do we uh, secure an end to that? Well, um, I just saw a video that um, Mwan Zuruke is also wanted by the, I, um, what should I say, IPOB or no government or ESN. I saw the video going viral where they match their face. They said they are looking for Mwan Zuruke. See, what I advise the Eastern governors to do is to stop talking. They should not come on air to say anything concerning these matters anymore. They should collaborate and begin to penetrate the hideouts of these people and decimate them. You know, they should prepare high-profile, speedy judicial processes. There are people from the East that are judges in Nigeria. Give them responsibility. There are people from the East that are in the military, in the police. Don't send somebody from anywhere. Get patriotic people from the East that believe that Biafra can be actualized through other means and put them and give them the opportunity. The governors that are seated there today, they should forget about political gimmicks, political right, politics. They should focus on the people All and right, help the so police much. agencies to forge ahead, find out these people, bring them out, and prepare judicial processes for them. All right, thank you so much. Indeed, uh, we have been speaking with Dr. Roy Ohidebe. He is uh, a security consultant, and uh, he has uh, shared so many thoughts and uh, ways forward on how we can tackle all of these um, developing issues as they affect um, the nation's security. Thank you yet again for joining us uh, on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. All right, um, that's um, the size of the show for today. A very big thank you to all of our guests, uh, our guests who has joined, and of course, um, all of you who have sat back uh, to watch today. We'll return again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadoni. I am Messi Boko. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you missed out on any part of the conversation. While Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.